Have you ever wondered if there's one single equation that explains everything in the universe? Physicists call this the theory of everything. Over the centuries, two main theories have shaped our understanding of the cosmos. First, there's general relativity, which was brought to us by the legendary Albert Einstein. This theory deals with gravity and helps us understand massive objects like planets, stars and galaxies. It's all about the big stuff. On the other hand, we have quantum mechanics. This one's all about the tiny stuff, subatomic particles, atoms, molecules, you name it. Quantum mechanics gives us the standard model, which describes three non-gravitational forces, the strong nuclear, weak nuclear, and electromagnetic forces. These two theories, general relativity and quantum mechanics, are like two sides of the same coin. They've been tested and validated in their own realms, but here's the kicker, they don't play well together. In regions of extremely small scale, like inside a black hole or the, the moments right after the Big Bang, these theories just don't mesh. To solve this puzzle, scientists have been on a quest to find a new framework that unifies gravity with the other three forces. Enter quantum gravity. This is an area of active research with string theory being a major player in the field. It suggests that at the beginning of the universe, all four fundamental forces were one, According to this theory, every particle in the universe is a tiny vibrating string. The way these strings vibrate determines the particle's mass and charge. Picture an electron as one type of vibration, while an upquark vibrates differently. But string theory isn't without its challenges. It's controversial and hard to test with our current technology. Plus, it proposes additional dimensions of space-time, six or seven more to be precise, making our universe ten or eleven dimensional. So where does that leave us? In parallel to the intense search for a theory of everything, various scholars have debated the possibility of its discovery. One significant argument against the feasibility of a theory of everything comes from Godel's incompleteness theorem. Godel's theorem, informally stated, asserts that any formal theory sufficient to express elementary arithmetical facts and strong enough for them to be proved is either inconsistent or incomplete. Stanley Jackie, in his 1966 book The Relevance of Physics, pointed out that because a theory of everything will certainly be a consistent, non-trivial mathematical theory, it must be incomplete. He claims that this doom searches for a deterministic theory of everything. Freeman Dyson has stated that Goodell's theorem implies that pure mathematics is inexhaustible. No matter how many problems we solve, there will always be other problems that cannot be solved within the existing rules. Because of Godel's theorem, physics is inexhaustible too. The laws of physics are a finite set of rules and include the rules for doing mathematics, so that Godel's theorem applies to them. Stephen Hawking, once a staunch believer in the theory of everything, reconsidered his stance after studying Godel's theorem. He stated, some people will be very disappointed if there is not an ultimate theory that can be formulated as a finite number of principles. I used to belong to that camp, but I have changed my mind. However, not everyone agrees. Jürgen Schmidhuber argues that Gödel's theorems are irrelevant for computable physics. In 2000, he explicitly constructed limit-computable, deterministic universes whose pseudo-randomness based on undecidable, Godel-like, halting problems is extremely hard to detect, but does not prevent formal theories of everything describable by very few bits of information. Another related critique comes from Solomon Pfefferman and others who offer examples like Conway's Game of Life. The underlying rules are simple and complete, but there are formally undecidable questions about the game's behaviors. Analogously, it may or may not be possible to completely state the underlying rules of physics with a finite number of well-defined laws, but there is little doubt that there are questions about the behavior of physical systems which are formally undecidable on the basis of those underlying laws. So does Godel's theorem mean that a theory of everything cannot exist? Most physicists argue that it does not. They see the statement of the underlying rules as sufficient for a theory of everything. However, scholars invoking Godel's theorem may be referring not to the underlying rules, but to the comprehensibility of the behavior of all physical systems. Moreover, there is a philosophical debate within the physics community on whether a theory of everything deserves to be called the fundamental law of the universe. 
Some hold that emergent laws which govern the behavior of complex systems should be seen as equally fundamental. Examples include the second law of thermodynamics and the theory of natural selection. Ultimately, the debate continues. Some argue that no physical theory to date is precisely accurate and that physics proceeds through successive approximations. Others, like Steven Weinberg, suggest that principles like Newton's laws of motion work well enough to give us confidence in their application to more complex systems. While difficulties arise, especially when combining quantum mechanics with general relativity, the pursuit of a theory of everything remains one of the most profound quests in science. As we delve deeper into the quest for a theory of everything, one cannot ignore the monumental contributions of string theory and M-theory. These theories aim to unify all the fundamental interactions of nature gravitation, the strong interaction, the weak interaction, and electromagnetism. String theory and its more comprehensive sibling M theory propose that the fundamental particles we observe are not point-like dots, but rather tiny, vibrating strings. Since the 1990s, physicists like Edward Witten have suggested that 11-dimensional M-theory, which can be described by one of the five perturbative superstring theories, and in another, limit by 11-dimensional supergravity, might be the long-sought theory of everything. One of the remarkable properties of string-slash-M-theory is the requirement for seven extra dimensions beyond the four we experience in our universe. This builds on earlier insights from the Kaluza-Klein theory, where general relativity applied to a five-dimensional universe seemed to unify gravity and electromagnetism. Another critical aspect of string theory is its incorporation of supersymmetry, which, along with extra dimensions, offers potential solutions to the hierarchy problem. Essentially, why gravity is so much weaker than other forces, the idea is that gravity might propagate into the extra dimensions while other forces remain confined to our familiar four-dimensional space-time. The theoretical and experimental support for string theory is compelling. The particle content of the standard model, including neutrino masses, fits neatly into representations that emerge naturally from string theory. This theory also addresses quantum gravity's most perplexing problems, such as the black hole information paradox and the correct entropy of black holes, while offering insights into pure mathematics and strongly coupled gauge theories due to the E gauge of string duality. However, a significant challenge remains the sheer number of possible four-dimensional universes predicted by string theory. The small, curled-up extra dimensions can be compactified in a vast number of ways, leading to different low-energy particles and forces. This landscape of possibilities has led some to propose that many or all of these universes exist, with only a few being habitable, an idea tied to the anthropic principle. This has sparked criticism, with some arguing that string theory can't make useful, falsifiable predictions, relegating it to pseudoscience or philosophy. Despite this, research continues vigorously, exploring whether string theory might indeed hold the keys to a unified understanding of the universe. Parallel to string theory, loop quantum gravity is another contender in the race for a theory of everything. Although its primary aim is not unification, it introduces a lower bound on possible length scales and has shown potential in modeling fundamental particles. Recent advances suggest it could reproduce features resembling the standard model with electric and color charge interpreted as topological quantities. Both string theory and loop quantum gravity represent ambitious steps toward a unified theory. While the journey is fraught with challenges and debates, the relentless pursuit of understanding continues to drive theoretical physics forward.